translation. The combat would be primarily melee, with a wide variety of ancient creatures to take on. Each species would exhibit distinct behaviours, and with that, unique attack patterns. Some creatures would hunt in packs, for example, and some would attack both humans and other creatures indiscriminately. Despite the weaponry being exclusively melee, some of the weapons look pretty interesting and unique. There would be a skill-based leveling system, upgrading your abilities as you progress, and I assume your weaponry too. Presumably, Cal suffered a similar fate to Legend of the Sun, and was never released. Shining Law was a planned precursor to the more well-known Shining Law Online, which was an MMORPG for the Xbox and PC, and was also cancelled, being developed by NCSoft. Shining Law was to be a dating RPG, whatever the hell that means. This was due for release on Xbox and PC around 1999-2000, and Shining Law Online was due for release in 2003. The two games shared some assets, for example many of their characters were carried over, but the gameplay was changed to an MMO, and the plot was reworked. In its original incarnation, it would have featured some dice-based mini-games similar to those in Mario Party. A beta was developed that was reportedly very unbalanced, but Shining Law was eventually cancelled. Interestingly, the soundtrack from a seasoned composer who famously composed for the Luna and Grandia series was completely finished, but the game never saw the light of day. Call of the Dragonfly was an action-adventure game from Lost Boys Games being developed on several platforms, including, of course, the Xbox. You play as a female coder agent tasked with investigating a tech company suspected of kidnapping some British scientists. During the mission, she is infected by an experimental nanovirus which grants her special powers. As the gameplay indicates, the gameplay focuses heavily on stealth, with the player being able to adjust the camera angle to best suit the situation. The use of their special powers is also demonstrated, and interactive environmental elements will play a big part too. Being stealthy doesn't mean you can dawdle though, as the nanovirus, in addition to giving her powers, has caused her to slowly die. So, it's a race against time to solve the mystery of the abducted scientists and find a cure. Call of the Dragonfly was due for release in 2002, but never appeared. Toon Army was a first person action shooter being developed by Graph Designs. Set in World War II, you control these little chibi esque soldiers with big ass heads. Quite simple, really, you use an army of soldiers and vehicles to take on the bad guys of World War II across two campaigns, Europe and Africa, in single or multiplayer mode supporting up to 32 human or computer players. There will be several terrain types with interactive environments, detailed interiors, and fully destructible buildings. The developers also promised to vary weather conditions, advanced AI, and a wide selection of weapons and vehicles to use, including tanks and other land, air, and sea vehicles. The graphical style is quite cartoony, but Toon Army's characters will be rude and a bit cheeky with their banter. For some reason, it was counted. Duality was a stealth action RPG being developed by Trilobite Graphics, planned to be published by Fantabound Interactive on Xbox and PC in late 2002. Set in the future, the plot follows a theme we've heard before on this list. Some technological advances have resulted in an all-powerful corporation taking over. The more unique aspect of the game is that you control three separate characters in total, each with their own skill set. The mercenary, who Fantagram equated to a character from Metal Gear Solid. The mercenary uses advanced tech and weaponry to infiltrate and assault rival corporations, and is awarded money for completing these missions, which can be spent on upgraded gear and augmentations. The hacker has weaponry and traps, but they're far less aggressive or sophisticated than the mercs. Her job is, as her name suggests, to hack into systems. And the virtual being, a character without physical form who can manipulate the environment like Neo in the Matrix. This virtual aspect is where duality gets its name. The game takes place in both the real world and in cyberspace. Interestingly, although you would take control of all three characters at points in the game, there would in 
no way be affiliated and would even view the other two as enemies. Their seemingly individual stories would overlap and intertwine as the story progressed. I'm not sure how far they got to the development before it was cancelled, but the graphics and lighting effects certainly looked impressive. Creature Conflict The Clan Wars was a planned turn based strategy game being developed by Lucas Entertainment. The game seems very similar to the PlayStation's Hogs of War, which if you haven't played it is similar to a 3D Worms game. You control one of several cartoon animals using various weapons and tools to blast your rivals and various small planets. Because of this planet based nature of the levels, the play areas are continuous and have no edges. The specific planet's gravity and speed has to be taken into account when firing projectile weapons, much like adjusting for wind speed in worms. Power-ups will be littered throughout the levels, as well as gold, which would act as in-game currency, to be spent between levels on upgrades and new weapons. Unusually for a game of this type, the player's character would also level up and become more skillful with each level completed. The developers were clearly going for a comedic vibe here, because in the E3 trailer from hilarious on screen twice, and then drove it home with a really funny game. The graphics are 3D with destructible environments and cell shaded style for the characters. Creature Conflict was released for PC in 2005, a European exclusive, but the Xbox port is thought to have been abandoned quite early on. The Y Project was an action adventure game being developed by Westka Interactive. The game ran on the Unreal Engine, and was using some new technology being developed by Westco in conjunction with Epic Games. Although billed as a first-person shooter, the demo footage doesn't suggest that's the case at all. It's angled mostly from a third-person viewpoint. It seems that this was more to show off the graphical capabilities, detailed surfaces, and the lighting and shadow effects. The story sees humans at war with a colony of mutant bugs, with two human groups involved the military and a band of scientists. You work with both, and although they have a common enemy in the bugs, at the same time they're at odds with each other. Missions can be accepted and completed for either side, and your choices of which tasks to take on will affect your relationships and the game's plot. The developers promised some inventive weapon types with 60 weapons to use overall. These included a weapon that would burrow into an enemy, and one that did them no harm, but simply slowed their movement down. In the end, despite a publisher having signed a letter of intent to release the Y project, Westka ran out of money and had to close the studio. So that was 35 of the Xbox's many cancelled games. Let me know if any of them piqued your interest, and as always, thank you very much for watching. You can find the other episodes in my cancelled game series in this playlist. Welcome to another episode of Cancelled Games, where we take a look at some of the unreleased games for a particular console. Today it's the PlayStation 3, which being last gen is probably the most recent system I'll be covering for now. The PS3 has a huge library of games, and with it a vast number of cancelled titles. Many of the cancelled games of this generation were also headed to the Xbox 360 and or PC, though some of them you'll see in those episodes in the future. So let's have a look at 35 of the PS3 games that never were. The Right was a first person shooter development from Ignition Entertainment for the PS3, 360 and PC with a planned October 2010 release. You might be getting some Hitler vibes from this title and you'd be right. Reich is set in an alternate universe 200 years after the Nazis won World War II. It's set in the US in New Berlin, built on the ruins of Washington, D.C. The city is 
city is policed by a secret police force called Death's Hand, kind of a the SS. A resistance group is formed, calling themselves the Chosen. The Chosen have special powers after an experimental project undertaken 60 years prior to the game, including telekinesis and telepathy. They call these abilities Psy Power. Bright's developers promised to reinvent the first person shooter genre by introducing the use of these Psy Powers to the gameplay, allowing the players to manipulate the environment and perform an array of acrobatic maneuvers in physics based attacks. In game, your side powers would allow you to telekinetically move and throw objects and enemies, fly, move at great speed, and slow down time. It would feature two player co op, and up to eight players could battle it out online. There would have been a certain amount of freedom in how players used their powers and weaponry. You could have your side power in one hand and a gun in the other, but you could dual wield guns if that's your thing, or forego the use of weapons altogether and solely use your side powers. This looks like it would have afforded the player a lot of freedom in how they wanted to approach each level or deathmatch, grabbing and throwing environmental objects, destroying parts of the arena, and shooting their enemies at the same time. The environment would actually become a weapon when side powers were introduced. Seemingly some money was mismanaged by one of the studio bosses so they couldn't complete the game. Well, I say some, 20 million dollars. Plus, there was some kind of scandal involving claims of sexual harassment. At this point, they had completed two of the game's nine levels, reportedly costing $23 million. Ignition closed their Florida studio, which was developing right in November 2010, a month after the game was originally planned to drop. What a shame this never made it. It promised big, but the gameplay footage available does suggest that it would have been an interesting take on the genre, and really fun. Codenamed Heist was a PlayStation 3 exclusive action game being developed by SCE London Studio. It would have a heavy emphasis on cooperative play and would feature both third person shooter and driving elements. It would also feature extravagant set pieces. First announced by Sony at 2006's E3, it was later cancelled around 2008 2009, although there were also rumours that the game was merely in limbo, with development to be resumed later. It was, however, shown before 2006 at E3 in 2005, but wasn't explicitly named, instead being used to demonstrate the PS3's processor via one of the game's showy action set pieces. The footage available resulted in a fair bit of debate as to whether it was true in-game visuals or merely cutscenes, but I'd say that it's most likely a bit of both. The co-op sections in particular do look like in-game footage, and also show that there is an interesting dynamic between the two characters when working cooperatively, taking cover and honing in on their targets. Sony's decision to cancel 8 Days in 2008 was apparently due to its lack of an online mode, which at the time Sony was shifting towards, prioritising first-party games with significant online features. 8 Days was cancelled along with another game the studio were planning to make, a PS3 follow-up to The Getaway. Alien's Crucible was an RPG based around the Alien's film, being developed by Obsidian for the PS3 and Xbox 360. The fact that Obsidian was the developer is pretty exciting for Alien's fans, considering their experience with this kind of game. The developers struggled a bit with the source material. They felt that it was too difficult to create a true horror game based on the franchise, as by that time everyone was fully aware of the Aliens themselves and their behaviour. So, instead of a horror theme, they aimed for a survival game, in which the aim was to, well, survive. They focused on the in-game environment and the consequences of a party member getting impregnated with alien eggs. If a team member was to get mouth raped by a facehugger, the player had the choice to quickly put them out of their misery, to put them into stasis for the time being, or to, of course, just let it happen and have an alien baby burst from their chest. Resources available would be strictly limited, so a certain amount of resource management would come into the survival aspect of the game. Deaths would be permanent, so once a team member was gone, they were gone for good. Despite the number of aliens, animals and humans that you'd encounter in the game, and inevitably kill, the only aim was to escape the facility in which the game takes place. It featured real-time combat, and 
command for the issue to team members to instruct them to perform certain actions. Alien's Crucible was cancelled when the decision was made to cancel all Alien's franchise games in development at the time. Despite Obsidian's reservations about making a horror game based on the films, Creative Assembly managed to pull it off very well in their 2014 game Alien Isolation. An unnamed Silent Scope reboot was in development around 2011, after Konami approached Day One Studios asking them to adapt the series into a third-person shooter for the PS3 and 360. 